Recently on the channel here, I took a look at dual GPUs, and in that video, you guys told me, why don't I take a look at two 2070 Supers and compare them against an RTX 2080 Ti. And so I reached out to Nvidia and I asked them, would it be okay if they sent over a 2070 Super? And they said to me, we'll send you over one as long as you give it away to your audience. And I said to myself, this is an absolute win for all the tech yes citizens out there. So let's make it happen. And that's what we're gonna do here today. We're gonna be testing out two of these RTX 2070 Supers as well as testing out a single one doing a review on both one and two of these cards, and of course, telling you if it's worth it to go with NVLink, which in this case, you will need to get an additional bridge, which does cost a little bit extra, but at this price point, is it going to beat that 2080 Ti? And also stay tuned, because I'm gonna announce how you can get in with a chance to win one of these cards right here. And with that aside, let's roll the benchmarks. So coming out of those benchmarks, I was actually surprised by the 22070 Supers and the fact that in a lot of the cases here, four out of the five titles, it was posting numbers either coming a little bit ahead of that of a 2080 Ti or in three of the five titles coming well ahead of that of a 2080 Ti. And this is going to cost the same amount of money if you're looking to get into PC gaming as a 2080 Ti. And this sort of leaves me at a different uh, opinion than Crossfire, because when I tested Crossfire out in a recent video, the numbers were all over the place and a lot of the titles just simply didn't support Crossfire. And when it did, you really only got 80% scaling at best. Uh, but when we look at F1 2019, for example, we got some explosive numbers at 1440p and also 4K coming well ahead of that of the 2080 Ti. Looking at Far Cry New Dawn, it only managed to just edge out the 2080 Ti. Though keep in mind, I believe we are starting to reach a CPU bounce scenario. And this is even with the 9900K overclocked to five gigahertz with 3600 CL16 memory in dual channel. Uh, looking at the 4K numbers, again, they were similar to the 1440p numbers only just edging out the 2080 Ti there as well. But moving over to Strange Brigade, both 1440p and 4K, this was in Vulcan, and this was probably the most interesting result because the GPUs were acting on their own. And I believe in this title, because in some titles, especially on DX11, you're going to be limited to eight gigabytes of VRAM. And so we saw a massive uplift here at 1440p and 4K over the 2080 Ti and even over that of a single 2070 Super. So this was probably the shining star for NVLink SLI. And then moving over to Tom Clancy's The Division 2, however, DX11 and DX12, this was the worst case scenario where the numbers were coming in under that of a single 2070 Super, because when you've got both of these linked up, they are gonna run at slightly lower clock speeds than that of a singular card. Though going over to the last example, we got Shadow of the Tomb Raider, and this was on DX12, and we saw some numbers beating that of the 2080 Ti, both at 1440p and 4K. 
And now what about overclocking the cards? This is where the 2070 Supers together didn't make a whole lot of sense. And the single 2070 Super and also the single 2080 Ti overclocked and gave results that were a lot better. And also looking at the power consumption results, of course, going with two GPUs is going to start burning up a lot more power, even compared to that of a single 2080 Ti. Though speaking of overclocks and temperatures and noise, I decided to do some tests with the dual configuration versus the single configuration and pulling up the temperatures here does show a bit of a weakness with SLI. And we see here that one of the cards, the top card, is pulling in higher temperatures than the bottom card. And that's because it's sucking off the heat from the hot back plate of the bottom card. And this caused the temperatures both at 41% auto and then 60%, 80%, and 100% to pull much higher temperatures where I believe that 86 degree limit is actually the thermal limit where the card then starts to downclock. But we can see with 80%, the noise actually wasn't too bad and the second card was still performing under 80 degrees. Though if you do decide to go with an SLI setup like this, make sure you have a high airflow case that can really move some air to get that top card some cooler air so it can breathe better and get better temperatures. But of course, the noise on these SLI cards, you'd want to configure your fan curve profiles to around 60 or 80%. The we go to a single card, we got 76 degrees at 54% auto fan speeds. 60% was usually a sweet spot for most GPUs with dual fan configuration. This was 73 degrees, 80% was 66 degrees, and 100% was 61 degrees, though 100% on both dual cards and a single card, the noise to me was just simply unbearable. So finding that sweet spot fan curve profile, you wanna leave it between 60 and 80%. Though when we're overclocking, it did reap benefits a lot better for that of a single card, which actually showed performance gains in games. And speaking of those clock speeds, they normalized to about 2,055 megahertz overclocked. And then the memory, we got a healthy overclock bringing that up to 7,862 megahertz. And then out of the box, we have a 7,000 baseline GDR6 memory speed and the core clock went to 1905 megahertz. But on the dual cards, we maxed out at 1995 on both and then 7,700 megahertz on the memory for both. And then out of the box, both these cards averaged out at around 1,860 megahertz. So they weren't losing a whole lot of performance out of the box. And as we saw with those overclocked numbers, if you're going to go with dual MV Link. 2070 supers, I wouldn't bother overclocking, and I would, and I can't stress this enough, get some really good airflow in whatever case you're gonna put these two cards in. Though bringing things back to a conclusion for you guys, with the 2070 super, it's actually a cut down 2080. You get less CUDA cores, they're 2,560 per unit. You still get the same eight gigabytes of VRAM as the 2080, and you still get pretty similar ray tracing performance. Pulling up the Port Royal benchmark, we can see that the 2070 Supers in SLI do better than a 2080 Ti and a single card still does pretty well. But as it stands for me personally, I'm waiting for some of these newer titles to come out where ray tracing is promised to be more polished than in current titles where it does tank performance quite a bit. And you also get DLSS. And when I tested this with Shadow of the Tomb Raider, the performance uplist, at least on SLI cards, really wasn't worth it. We could see here we're getting 98 FPS, only a little bit more than that of 4K, but the image quality on native 4K is much better than that of DLSS. So ultimately with a 2070 Super, it is that $500 MSRP card that's sort of like the cut down high-end 2080 card, and it's coming in at a decent price. And if you decide to go with two of them, it's actually not a bad choice but I will pull up my analogy from the Crossfire video I did, and that is I would only recommend SLI to people who play a particular sort of game and they play a lot of that and they know they can extract the benefits out of SLI. And so I thought with the numbers here today, it was better than a 2080 Ti, but of course, as we saw with Tom Clancy's The Division 2, sometimes even AAA titles won't support this technology, which means that you'll have a GPU sitting there literally doing nothing, and that's your investment that you use for gaming doing nothing. So it depends on what you do as a gamer to whether this technology is suited for you. And to me personally, I'd probably go with a single card since I do play a variety of titles on PC. 
But that being said, SLI, at least from the numbers that I've seen here today, does work better than Crossfire, both in terms of scaling and also the amount of games supported. And if you're a AAA gamer, then I guess it's more likely than not that SLI will be supported in very popular titles. Though do keep in mind the heat that these cards put out, coupled with the fact that the top GPU is going to get hotter, you'll want some seriously good cooling and also a good power supply to go with two of these cards if you wish to do that, because on average in the numbers here today, it's pulling ahead of a single 2080 Ti, which costs roughly the same money. Though speaking of the single card, it's coming in at 500 bucks, $100 more expensive than AMD's 5700 XT, which does pull some really good numbers in its own right. But if you guys haven't seen my previous video, I did the 2060 Super versus the 5700 XT, I said that I would wait for an AIB card if you were going to go with the AMD route because that reference cooler just didn't really do the job for me personally, and I can't wait to see what the AIB cards do. The Founders Edition card here, it's a decent implementation from Nvidia, build quality is good. On the back of the card, you've got one USB Type-C out, three display port outs, as well as a HDMI 2 out. There's also two 90mm fans, and the side of the card, the logo, the GeForce RTX, will light up green, and if you decide to get the NVLink bridge, at least the NVIDIA one, that will light up green as well. But basically the single 2070 Super, it's coming in at 500 MSRP, and I think at its price point, it was a lot better of a proposition than the 2080 ever was. And even against the 2080 Super, I do prefer this card in terms of a high-end gaming GPU, because that's what I feel it is. The numbers that it put out here today were pretty solid, as well as getting two of these, you've got the option to do that in the future, and if NVIDIA decide to keep supporting titles like AAA titles and extracting those benefits out of two cards, then you'll have something that performs better than a 2080 Ti 2 on average. Also, before I get on out of here, one important thing to talk about with the two 2070 Supers is the eight gigabytes of VRAM. Pretty much when you put cards in SLI and practically all titles out there, there are a few rare exceptions, but we won't talk about that today, you're limited to only one of the cards VRAM because it shares that VRAM and utilizes the buffers on both. Meaning that even though these results are fine for 1440p and I didn't really have a problem with 4K results here today, who knows how long until that performance will be capped by eight gigabytes of VRAM, especially at 4K, and especially if you get some texture mods for certain games, which can be very VRAM hungry. So it is something to be mindful of if you do wish to go with this route. But of course, in regards to the pricing, that's the MSRP in the United States. When it comes to Australia, these things generally come in a bit more expensive than that US pricing. And in fact, things like RTX 2060s and 2070 non-supers go on sale on eBay, for example, for really good prices, at least at this point in time. And so if you're in Australia, I'd just keep your eyes out on all the different cards in the price segments and get whichever one you can get for the best price. And with that aside, I hope you guys enjoyed today's review of not just one of these cards, but two of these cards. And if you did, then be sure to hit that like button as I'm now gonna be giving away one of these 2070 Supers to one of you guys in the audience. International giveaway, no strings attached. Thank you guys for watching my content. And also thanks to Nvidia for making this happen. And if you wanna get in with a chance to win, Link is in the description below. I'll be announcing the winner on Twitter in two weeks time, as well as announcing the winners on the previous GPUs in the video I did on Twitter at the same time. So there's gonna be three giveaways going. The winners will be announced in two weeks time. Best of luck, I hope you win, and I'll catch you in another tech video very soon. But also let us know in the comment section below, what do you think of two of these cards versus the 2080 Ti? And also what do you think of SLI and V-Link, I was actually a little bit surprised. I came into this video, as I said before, thinking it would be a one-way victory for the 2080 Ti, but I was actually pleasantly surprised. Anyway, I'll see you in the next tech video very soon. Peace out for now, bye.